Hey, what's going on guys? Dan with Backwoods Overland. Nick is floating around here somewhere, but today we have a very special video for you. We're gonna be installing a full goose gear system in this 2017 JKU. We have a ton of plans for this JKU. It's getting a whole bunch of stuff, but today we're gonna to be installing a full goose gear system. So before we get started, let's take a look at all of the tools we're gonna to need to make this installation possible. So for our tools, we're gonna to need a half inch open-ended wrench, we have a 3 16 and a 5 32nd hex key. We have both a T-channel and a socket attachment. You can use either one, doesn't really matter. After that, we have our cordless drill with a 9 64th drill bit. We have a cutoff wheel as well as an impact driver. After that, we have a T30, T40, T50 Torx bit as well as a 10 millimeter and an 18 millimeter socket. And then on the other side here, we have our Phillips head screwdriver and flathead screwdriver. The flathead gets used as a pry tool. We have some box cutters, some lineman pliers, and some diagonal cutters. So the first step in our install process is we have to remove the back seats. We already went ahead and did that, but we wanna make sure that we take our hardware from that seat removal and put it back loosely in place. And now that that's done, we're gonna go ahead and start by removing the seat belts. So in order to remove those seat belts, we're just gonna take the plastic cover off of the front. Once that cover is off, it's gonna reveal a T50 bolt. And we're just gonna go ahead and remove that to pull the seat belt off. So in order to remove the bottom section of the seat belt, we have to take the plastic off. We have to take first the small clip out and then we will remove the side piece towards the hardtop. Once that side piece is removed, we can remove the two bolts at the bottom of the plastic, which hold the plastic to the floorboard. And then before we take the plastic off, we do have to remove that back cover piece. So with the back cover plate removed, we can go ahead and remove the jack as well. Once that jack is out, we can go ahead and completely disconnect the plastic from the side. There is a 10 millimeter bolt, which you can see Nick removing here. And once that's off, the whole plastic piece will come off as one unit. Now you wanna make sure that if you have the 12 volt outlet in the back, that you do not pull too hard as that will pull that plug out. But we do wanna make sure that we disconnect that and tuck that away for future use. And then once you have the passenger side done, we're gonna go ahead and essentially repeat the exact same process over on the driver's side of the vehicle. And now with the plastic out of the way on both sides, we're gonna go ahead and remove the subwoofer. This is not 100% necessary, as we found out later on in the installation, but it does definitely make things easier so you have much more room. You do have to disconnect the wiring, however, because we do have to remove those posts. Now, in order to remove the actual seatbelt retraction device, we just have to remove the bolt that holds it to the roll bar. These bolts are extremely tight, so make sure that you use a breaker bar or something first to get it loose, and then you can use your power tools or something like that. But again, these bolts are very, very tight, so take your time. So we went ahead and we got all of the seatbelt stuff out of the way and removed those side plastics as well. And we also took the subwoofer out while we were doing that. So our next step is to get the hinge for the tailgate off, but we wanna make sure that we have somebody supporting the tailgate when we do that so that it doesn't swing away and hit the Jeep. So we're just gonna go ahead and remove the four Torx bolts. And once those are out, we're just gonna pull the hinge out and tuck it away. So 
So now at this point, we are ready to begin the installation of these side cubbies. However, before we do that, we wanna make sure that if we're gonna be doing anything underneath of the Goose Gear plate system, that we do that now. If you wanna add some sound deadening or wiring or anything like that underneath of your Goose Gear plate system, now is the time to run those wires. Now is the time to do that before we actually start the install. And now that that tailgate is disconnected, we can go ahead and start the installation for the side cubbies. So like I mentioned before, we do have to remove these two posts on the passenger side of the vehicle. We're just going to go ahead and take our cutoff wheel and cut these posts off. Now something to keep in mind is when we are grinding inside the vehicle, we want to make sure that we cover the inside with either some cardboard or a welding mat or something like that to avoid any kind of internal fire. And now with the posts out of the way, we can go ahead and reinstall our factory subwoofer. We are going to connect this and that is going to run underneath of the side panel. And we're gonna go ahead and remove the clips that went to the posts from before as those will just get in the way. And then before we install our side cubby, we need to put the front face on first. And this is just easy enough to slide right into place. The forwardmost bolt on the hardtop does need to be removed so that we can install this tab. Once that tab is pressed up into place, we can feed our bolt down through the hardtop and through the body of the vehicle and tighten that down. We do want to make sure that that is angled towards the rear of the vehicle. And once that's done, we can go ahead and put our carpet back in place and install the first side cubby. Make sure that you do not pinch your subwoofer wiring. We do need to install the top panel next, and then the next section can get a little tricky. We wanna make sure that we line up the capture nuts inside that 80-20 extrusion. And this can be a little bit challenging, so take your time and make sure everything is lined up as this can get extremely frustrating if it is not lined up. Then once everything is lined up, you can go ahead and drop that top panel down and begin to tighten your bolts. Once everything is connected, we can go ahead and install the bolt for that tab I mentioned earlier, and then reconnect our hinge and tailgate. Once all that's done, we can go ahead and reinstall our access panel, as well as our roll bar cover plates. Now that the passenger side is done, we can repeat the exact same process over on the driver's side of the vehicle. Now something that's a little bit different on the driver's side of the vehicle is we do have our hardtop connection. So we're going to go ahead and just remove that plug as well as the line for the washer fluid. I like to use a rag when I do this because sometimes there is a little bit of fluid in those lines and I don't want that spraying all over the place. And then once those cables are disconnected, we're going to go ahead and feed those through that top channel like you saw before and then we're going to tighten everything down just like we did on the passenger side. All right, so that's gonna do it for the side cubby portion of the install. So next, we're gonna actually install the plate system. And we're gonna start with the rearmost section of that plate system. 
Now the plate system is relatively easy to install. It's only four bolts, but before we install that, we wanna make sure that we tighten down all of the factory seat hardware that was in the vehicle beforehand. This will keep us flat and level as we install the plate. Once that hardware is tightened down, you can go ahead and bring your rear plate in and set it up and line it up in place. Once the plate is lined up, we can go ahead and install our four Allen head bolts. Once all four bolts are in place, we can go ahead and tighten all of them down. And to wrap up the main plate install, we're gonna go ahead and install the jack access plate. All right, so now we have that rear plate system in. As you saw, it was super easy. It was only four bolts, but something I do wanna mention is that we used anti-seize on those four bolts to install the rear plate, and we did that because those bolts have the potential to be exposed to weather. So we definitely suggest using anti-seize or something like that on any bolts that would potentially be exposed to some weather. But now that that back plate is done, we can go ahead and start with our seat deletes. So both of the seat deletes install pretty much the same way. You wanna make sure that you pull out the center section of the 80-20 extrusion so that we can install our support piece. This can get a little bit tricky, so take your time and be patient with it and make sure that you line up those captured nuts when you go to reinstall it. Once the middle support piece is installed, you can go ahead and slide the front support piece into place. This one is much, much easier than that middle section. Once the two support pieces are installed, we can install our side infill panel. And then once all of those pieces are installed, we can go ahead and slide the tongue underneath of the rear plate and install the seat delete into place. Underneath of it, you're gonna see two brackets that are gonna install on each side. You're gonna tighten those down and then also install the rear hardware. Once all of the hardware is in place, we're gonna drill a hole through that middle support piece so that we can bolt it to this lower bracket. And there are two brackets on each side of the vehicle. The 60 delete section is essentially the exact same process. We're gonna go ahead and remove that center piece of 8020 so that we can attach our support piece. You wanna make sure that when we install that support piece that it is orientated correctly so that it covers the hump and does not get in the way. And again, take your time lining up the captured nuts. This can be quite tricky and a little bit frustrating, but just be patient and take your time with it. And then once that center support piece is in place, we can install our side infill panel as well as our front support piece. Once all that's in place, we can go ahead and install it into the vehicle, again, sliding that tongue section underneath of the rear plate.
And again, we do have those two brackets on the underside of the plate system. And after those are installed, we can install our cover plates. We wanna make sure that all of our hardware is in place before we tighten it down, just to make sure that everything lines up. Once your hardware is tightened down, everything will become one nice flat platform. And then lastly, we install our cover plates. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for the install today for the Goose Gear system in this 2017 JKU. We have a ton of stuff coming for this. It's getting a J30, it's getting solar, it's getting all kinds of stuff. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel for those videos. If you have any questions about anything we did today, go ahead and drop them down in those comments down below. And while you're down there, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button as it really does help us out here on the channel. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you guys in the next one. is to get this hinge for the rear tear terror gate hinge for the rear rear tail i can't talk today rear tailgate